Hi guys, inviting you all in my upcoming seminar in partnership with Registered Financial Planner Philippines. This is the Certificate in Real Estate Investing Seminar. Part 1 would be held on September 24, 2021, which is the Basics of Real Estate Investing. And the Part 2 or Module 2 would be on October 8, 2021, which is the Advanced Real Estate Finance Module. I hope to see you all there. If you are interested, please register. Register. I'll put the link in the description box below. So a condo pasalo is a less conventional way of buying properties. But lately, it has been a trend because it gives a lot of benefits such as hedging inflation rate, catching up on missed opportunities, and being able to purchase the original price or almost the original price from the developer. But what do you need to know when buying a condo pasalo property? So if you're interested, this is Richard C., and stay around for this vlog. Okay, so the first thing you need to know when buying a condo pasalo property is the cash out. Now, a lot of buyers would like to buy or would prefer to buy a condo pasalo property thinking that it's a lot better than a pre-selling property from the developer. But what they do not know is that when you're buying a condo pasalo property, you would need a lot of cash out. Preferably at least a minimum of 1 million pesos. Why? Because first of all, you will have to pay all the previous payments of the original buyer. Remember when you're buying a condo pasalo, technically it's the same amount of money yung ilalabas mo na dapat na ilabas mo na if you bought the property years ago at that price. So let's say for example that property was launched in 2018 and that was the original price and from 2018 to 2021 the original buyer had been paying 20,000 pesos per month. So uh, 20,000 pesos times 36 months, that's the total cash out you will have to pay the original buyer. Because if you will think about it, that's how much na yung the buyer or that's how much you've been paying if you bought the property from that date until the present day today. So that's the reason for this big cash out. Of course, if the seller would have little gains, then you would have to pay that as well and then continue paying the rest of the payment with the developer. So the reason why people would want to buy a pasalo property even with the big cash out is because they want to catch up on missed opportunities. Because probably three years ago, you did not have that kind of money. You were not that stable to buy a condominium. And then now that you're liquid, may pera ka na, you don't want to buy that property because mataas na yung price sa developer. So that's the reason you would prefer a condo pasalo if you have sufficient cash in your bank account. So that's the most basic thing about condo pasalo. Cash out is very important. The second thing you have to remember is advances. When you're buying condo pasalo, it's not only paying all the payments made by the original buyer. Some developers would require you to give advance payments for them to be able to transfer the rights under your name. For example, DMCI properties would require you 3 months advance on top of your post-dated checks and on top of the payment made to the original buyer. Some developers would require an advance payment of 5%. So these are the things that the seller does not tell you because probably hindi din nila alam na there are these policies from the developer. So before buying that condo pasalo unit, you will have to check with the developer what are their guidelines when it comes to transferring condo pasalo or if it it's even possible to transfer. Now, uh, I go to the next point, which is minimum payment required. For other developers, they don't require advance payments, but rather they require a minimum payment made. So it means that, let's say for example, you're the original buyer of this condo unit and you would want to sell it. Unfortunately, your payment is only currently around 6%. So some developers would require a minimum payment percentage before you could transfer for the ownership or before you could sell your property under the condo pasalo. Let's say for example, your current property that you would like to sell, um, the current payments you've made is already 5%. But then you're not allowed to sell it because the developer requires you to pay at least 10% before you could sell or before you could actually put your property in the market or before you could transfer it to a new buyer. So um, in this case, you will have to pay the 5% advance first one time before you could sell the property. 
property. In other cases, the buyer would pay the 5% advance to meet the 10% required payment before selling the property. So, nangyari na to sa akin, I bought a condo pasalo property from a seller and during the sale of the property, the buyer was at the 6% mark from the total selling price. After negotiations, of course, I agreed to buy the property plus um, not only with the original price but also with some capital gains for her. Uh, so, eventually, after processing the papers, uh, she's already paid. Binayara ko lahat, all her previous payments plus her capital gains plus her earnings, of course, and all the rest, I settled it with the developer including yung past juice niya. But then, a few weeks later, the developer was calling me and they're telling me they cannot transfer the property under my name. I said, why? Currently, you bought the property at the 6% mark. Apparently, there was a rule na dapat all payments of succeeding buyers would require a minimum of 10% before they could sell it. The seller was not aware of that, so I had to cash out additional 4% just to transfer it under my name. In this scenario, um, it could be complicated especially if you're very strict in terms of your cash flow or talagang you're just maximizing your money. I mean, you just have enough cash to put in as a down payment and to give a little capital gains. But then if you're required to do some advances, that might be a problem. You really have to be aware when it comes to the rules of the developer because it can be really complicated. Again, it's a different scenario for each developer but basing it from my experience, it's really 10%. Now, if you're a condominium buyer and you have plans of flipping properties, you would need to know at what percentage you could actually sell your property. Uh, let's use the same developer for example. Um, the developer requires a 10% payment before you could sell your property. Whether it's a condo pasalo or whether it's a property flipping, the developer would require 10%. Let's say for example, the payment terms would be 15% in 60 months or 15% in 5 years. So it means you could only sell your property pagdating ng 3.5 years because that would be your 10% mark which is the role of the developer be before you could sell your property. Again, it's a case-to-case -case basis. Some developer would require 5%, some developer would require 10%. And of course, if you're the buyer of the condo pasalo and you would like to sell again the property, they might require you for another 10% before you can hold on to property. So, currently um, there's a lot of new guidelines especially for developers. I think because they are regulating condo pasalo or they are actually giving a hard time for buyers just so they could easier sell their inventories. I'm not sure what's their point when it comes to new regulations like this. But previously, developers did not have these rules when it comes to condo pasala or when it comes to flipping properties. Now, the next thing you would have to remember is some of the developers does not allow you to sell the property at all before the turnover. So once you buy the property, you're not allowed to sell it whether it's a condo pasala or whether it's flipping the property, you will have to wait until the turnover before you could actually sell the property. So now, in cases like this, do not buy condo pasalo if the buyer is locked in with the rules of the developer. Just because even though you pay the buyer, the rights would not be transferred to you. It would still be under the original buyer but then you would be assuming all the responsibilities until the turnover or even worse, until the release of the title. You know, pre-selling properties, it could go up to two to three years after the turnover before you get the title that long. And that's the only way you could sell the property. So one of the developers had this rule before for one of their projects, but then we were able to work our way around it by signing a deed of assignment and waiver of rights. But still, the name is under the original buyer. It's it's just that wala na siyang rights when it comes to the property and then you assume all the obligations. But technically, the property is not under your name. So please be very careful with this one. So far in this scenario, it's not the total regulation of the developer but it actually depends on which project you are selling. So it usually happens pag masyado na mataas yung price ng developer sa inventory and medyo far na siya dun sa mga market prices and marami pang inventory yung developer. Okay, so next, a very important, very hot issue lately. Um, it's transfer fees and capital gains. Transfer fees for the developer could range between 100,000 to 200,000 pesos and could be paid either by the buyer or the seller depending on your agreement. What you have to remember when it comes to transfer fees is that some of the developers, they have a regulation that when you're transferring the property to a second degree relative, it's actually much cheaper. It would only cost 
cost you 25,000 pesos. But a lot of developers would not tell you this one. And if you do not know about this rule, then they would just charge you the normal transfer fees. So it's important to ask the developer if there is an advantage for selling your property to a second degree relative, then you'll be paying less transfer fees. Again, not applicable to all developers. So when it comes to capital gains, so a lot of people would say that if there's a transfer fee, there's no capital gains yet. But some of the developers do require capital gains already. No matter how big or small is the percentage paid, they require you to pay capital gains. So uh, this is common for across all brands, Avida, Alveo, and Ayala Land Premier. So for Shangri-La properties and other developers, they would require you to pay a capital gains once you reach a certain mark or once you reach a certain payment level. It could go anywhere between 30 to 50 percent. So once you already paid 30 percent for your property, then you're required to pay capital gains uh, whether it's turned over or not yet turned over. Other developers would require as high as 50 percent payment before they charge capital gains before the turnover. Again, it's a case-to-case -case basis. All developers have their own guidelines when it comes to condo pasalo. Now, I'd like to warn you and go on with a very big issue that is happening right now. So, a lot of pasalo buyers two to three years ago, around 2018 or 2019, are receiving letters from the BIR saying that they did not pay the capital gains. No, These are specific for DMCI buyers. Technically, uh, two to three years ago, they paid the transfer fees, which was the only requirement to be able to acquire the property. But yet, um, the BIR is now running after them saying that they did not pay capital gains taxes. Now, this issue, I'm not sure whether it's a developer's issue or a BIR issue. So this is a letter from DMCI to one of the buyers who actually bought a condo pasalo years ago and now uh, DMCI is transferring the title under his name Unfortunately, there is a letter from the BIR. So we are pleased to inform you that we are processing the transfer of title of your purchased property for the unit. However, based on the assessment report of the Bureau of Internal Revenue or BIR, it was found that you need to settle an additional tax amounting to 514,410 and 60 centavos representing a capital gains tax and documentary tax amounting to 138,574 and 79 centavos as a result of the waiver and transfer of right from the unit's first buyer. So your account has been placed on hold due to the unsettled obligation. Please be advised that DMCI Homes cannot secure tax clearance certificate and certificate of authorizing registration for accounts with pending dues with BIR. This document documents are necessary in processing the transfer of title to your name. Okay, so based on that letter, I think um, the MCI was currently processing the title to the new buyer. They found out that the buyer did not pay the capital gains tax and documentary stamps. You have to remember that during that time, three years ago, it was not required. The only requirement was a transfer fee. So ngayon, there's a lot of gray areas when it comes to this one because there was no rule back then that they were required to pay the capital gains tax or the documentary stamp tax. Now, the thing with this one is the seller is now free from any obligation because uh, the rights has been transferred to the buyer and the buyer now assume all the obligation and right for the property. So, ang hindi ko lang magets dito is during that time, you either pay the capital gains tax or the transfer fees. So right now, even if the buyer paid the transfer tax, he's being charged capital gains tax on top of that three years after. So please do your due diligence when buying condo pasalo properties because BIR is now very hot with condo pasalo buyers. Okay? So those are the five things you have to remember when buying the condo pasalo property. One is the cash out, how much cash you would need to be able to buy the property. Two is the advances, how much advances does the developer require to be able to transfer the property. Three is the minimum payment required before you could sell your property. Four is the restriction on selling your property, whether you could actually sell your property before the turnover or just after the turnover. And five, of course, the fees involved such as the transfer fees and the capital gains tax. Okay, that's it, real pros uh, for this vlog. I hope it was informative and helpful. If it was, please do give me a big thumbs up. 
please comment down below if you are currently in this situation or, or if you know any situation na nangyari so we could all be warned. Let me just add a disclaimer. Again, I am not discouraging Kondo Pasalo. I am a big fan of Kondo Pasalo, um, whether buying or selling. It helps a lot with the economy and it helps a lot of real estate investors that are facing difficult scenarios and it helps buyers to catch up on missed opportunities. But rather, this is a warning with regards to the property you are buying. So again, this is Richard C. Please don't forget to subscribe and please do share this vlog to share information because sharing is caring. Don't forget to follow me on my social media accounts, connect with me, and I'll see you real soon.